of U.S. of Obie and Horn of Africa, and this is Future Africa program. Today I'm joined by Gal Matido from Kenya, and Gal Matido is a political analyst. And welcome, Gal Matido, to our Future Africa program. Thank you, thank you for having me. I really appreciate being here. Let me start with this question. And uh, Ethiopia and Kenya have a long-lasting relationship. And uh, to begin with, the latest one economic relationship between these two countries, uh, we can mention Safaricom, and we can also mention the uh, road corridors between the two countries. And there are also many political and uh, social relationship. What do you say on this, uh, please, Galma? First of all, thank you so much, uh, OBN, for having me on this uh, show for Horn of Africa. Uh, uh, describing the relationship between the two countries, that is Kenya and Ethiopia, one cannot finish in a day. Uh, these are two countries uh, which are regarded by international community and uh, global nations as one of the uh, strong and stable countries in Horn of Africa. And uh, the latest, as you mentioned, uh, partnership, the economic partnership, which now uh, is planning to open up the pace of the next future of communication in Ethiopia under uh, the partnership of Safaricom, which has been granted the license to operate in Ethiopia, is, is really a positive news and uh, also significant uh, regarded that uh, the world is heading to the future of AI and communication, respectively. And one thing in particular is I'm, 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 ve I'm very optimistic. Uh, a huge uh, country like Ethiopia will really now become a major player in communication. Uh, regarding that, this is the second most populous nation in Africa after Nigeria. And so when we speak of local consumption, when we speak of the local consumption power and you know what uh, you know, communication can bring as far as, you know, uh, sending of money, uh, uh, sharing of internet and, you know, uh, uh, sending of information to and from one person to another to organization, then Ethiopia uh, he has already started playing a very major role as far as that is concerned. And for many years, uh, uh, this is a country which uh, we really regard as the beacon for Horn of Africa, because when Ethiopia is awake, uh, the, the rest of Horn of Africa is awake. And uh, what I'm simply trying to say is the years of, uh, you know, uh, political relations, economic partnership, the two countries are enjoying, uh, backdating to the time of uh, the late president, Moi Kibaki. You've mentioned the, uh, Northern uh, Corridor Project, Lapset, that is Lamu Port, uh, South Sudan uh, Development Project, uh, which is a mega project aiming to open up the uh, northern uh, part of Kenya and interlink it with the uh, southern part of Ethiopia, something which has already been done uh, with the completion of uh, Merile Moyale Highway. And uh, last year, uh, Prime Minister B. Ahmed and the former president, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta opened the one customs borders, uh, border post at Moyale, which is really playing a key role in easing, uh, you know, transfer of goods between these two nations. And uh, finally, uh, I will not leave, uh, it will be so unfair if I leave uh, the, 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 the stability these two countries have been enjoying, uh, simply because when you look at Ethiopia, and uh, it's peacekeeping mission, uh, you know, under Army SOM peacekeeping mission in Somalia, uh, the, the, the Sierra Leone mission, which uh, Ethiopian forces are really keeping peace uh, in that country. And also when you look at the role Kenya is playing in South Sudan, the role Kenya is playing in Congo, these are two countries uh, which have really uh, stood forward in ensuring that uh, stability for Horn of Africa and ensuring that, you know, regional integration uh, for, for the communities living, you know, between these two countries. I'm referring to uh, the, the, the transborder communities of Borana, uh, the Kenyan Boranas and the Ethiopian Borana community living uh, between these two countries it is really uh, very significant to mention. This is also one of the initiatives of the Agenda uh, 2060 of the African Union, integrating the African countries in all aspects 
And if uh, these two countries are also uh, accomplishing that mission, that initiative, uh, if you can say something on this. History is good when we go back to it. Uh, and uh, when, 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 when we look at the role Ethiopia uh, has played as far as uh, uh, organization, the defunct organization of African unity and uh, the current African Union, it is really significant uh, simply because uh, when we look at what OAU have achieved in terms of, you know, uh, ensuring there is peace uh, in Africa, there is, uh, you know, integration, and that has been taken in a way by AU now under what we call African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the AFTA Treaty, which aims to, uh, you know, bring closer uh, African, uh, you know, countries, states, uh, so that they can enjoy common uh, economic benefits, you know, uh, integration from flow of goods and services and people, migration from one country to another is going to be made easy. And uh, I felt uh, uh, significantly that uh, Ethiopia, uh, should be playing a key role in this already. That is what uh, the, the current Prime Minister Abi Ahmed, uh, His Excellency Abi Ahmed, is doing. Uh, we've seen uh, the role uh, he embraced, which uh, made him to be recognized uh, by the Nobel Committees, you know, uh, for going whatever has happened in the history and, uh, uh, you know, declaring peace and stability with, with, with Eritrea it is something which is really very significant and also uh as uh, you know seeing the relations between ethiopia and somalia really getting strong uh under the leadership of the outgoing the former president uh, abdullah farmadio and the current president uh, president Yunis. and uh, recently when 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 also you look at the the the, the kenyan ethiopian partnership has really been uh, you know, boosted and significantly growing. So I believe uh, African Agenda 2063 uh, is really heading to the right direction. Let me bring you uh, to this question. And uh, AU, African Union, has, uh, you know, issued letters of invitation for peace talks uh, between Ethiopian government and uh, the terrorist CPLF in connection with the northern part of conflict. And uh, my question is, uh, of course, the Ethiopian government uh, has, you know, confirmed it is readiness without any precondition. And how do you see or how do you feel the call of African Union for this peace dialogue? That's a very good question. Uh, first of all, uh, let me take this opportunity uh, to put across uh, that uh, the international community should respect, uh, recognize, and always be on the side of defending any nation's sovereignty. I mean, that is what even African Union stands for, recognizing sovereignty of a nation. And I'm really appalled by the Western powers when, 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 when I saw the, the aspect of these countries trying to uh, give some sense of, you know, uh, so, so, I mean, territorial sovereignty to, to the, you know, the, the defunct, I will call it defunct, uh, Tigre People's Liberation Front. We, we might justify whatever they are fighting for in another way, but they cannot be justified that they stand in a way of a democratically elected government. This is not a rebel group. The election of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed is not uh, something which the international community uh, is not aware of. He was democratically elected. Uh, this is a, a Prime Minister who is serving on the legitimacy of the people he is representing in Ethiopia. So I felt the reason why I'm trying to bring this is Ethiopia is ready. But what I feel should also be put on the table as far as this is concerned, let us call spread a spread. And if the side of TPLF are trying to come with preconditions of trying to add actors, non-state actors, I, I, I mean, that is, that is something which cannot be justified even under international law. You might say non-state actors as the people who are suffering, I mean, in the war and, you know, whatever is happening. But I'm feeling that the, the Tigris side is, is trying to come into this peace talk 
uh, with a pre premedit I mean premeditated, uh, you know, argument that the Ethiopian government should be put on the wrong foot. And this is wrong because as far as I'm concerned, any country with a standing army has a right to defend itself from external aggression. And this is what happened in November last year. Let history remind us that it was not the Ethiopian government who started the aggression. It was the TPLF rebel group which attacked the Northern Command. And these are some of the areas which if indeed TPLF are ready to be honest, they should be ready to accept. And if so, the talks in South Africa to begin, then let it also be from the side of TPLF that they should not come with any precondition regarding that a democratically elected government of Prime Minister B. Ahmed has not put forward any precondition to this peace treaty, I mean, to this talk. And secondly, I would, I, I would like to bring uh, the aspect of foreign policy here. Tigre is a region in Ethiopia. The federal government of the Republic of Ethiopia is a government with, a, I mean, with a recognition from the international community, with a recognition from regional community. This is a government serving under the constitution of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia. So I feel it so uncomfortable that TPLF is trying to purge that they should be treated as a state entity rather than an entity which is causing, you know, disability within a state. And these are some of the areas, you know, uh, we should be getting clear before we move forward. But furthermore, I really agree with this peace talk, and I believe uh, the intention of the uh, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed is well clear. We understand that from Kenya. This is someone whom we, 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 we really don't have to tell the world. The role he has played, the role he is continuing to play in stability uh, in South Sudan, in Eritrea, and ensuring that, you know, Horn of Africa is stable. Why do you think that these are Western global powers often interfere in uh, African internal affairs. If you see, for example, the recent uh, uh, statements of different uh, institutions, international institutions, blaming the Ethiopian government as if uh, the TPLF is a victim and the Ethiopian people are the victim of the Ethiopian government. But the reality on the ground is different from that. And why they always prefer interfering into the African internal affairs as if they are the solution of all problems thank you so much i think one problem and uh, the united nation uh, should be non-biased when it comes to such issues and i really felt very confused when uh, the director general for who the world health organization uh, deliberately took side, designated that Ethiopian federal government is the perpetrator in this war. And he should be reminded that when he got uh, elected to serve in World Health Organization, he was not elected to serve under the government of Tigre. He was elected as an Ethiopian citizen. And I felt Dr. Gabriel Jesus should, should, should have been more careful with, with how he's trying to, you know, put across uh, the, 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 the case for this war. And uh, whatever uh, the, 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 the consent, I mean, the, the word by the Secretary General Antonio Guterres is well founded, but he should have also been so careful and he should have been more, uh, you know, concerned about the disappearing uh, humanitarian tracks in Tigray region. These are the critical questions the international community should be very honest to answer. We know whatever is going, I mean, the, the Ethiopian government is really trying to open up the, uh, the, the channel for humanitarian aid. But how will you do that? Convince me, how will you do that if the Tigray, the, the, the rebel house, they are looting? And when the Ethiopian government is using the territorial sovereignty to justify why they are doing this, then it is all over in, in many hashtags, genocide. You know, this is happening. And, and mind you, um, though I was not born, we have not mentioned the 27 years of terror TP levers brought to the Ethiopian people. I mean, if the international community are so concerned with the humanitarian agenda, 
and the aspect of human rights, then they should be they should be so you know deliberate in speaking and biased from both sides. We understand that. We know very well when they said, and this is the public domain, that in a span of four days they shall take over, you know, Addis Ababa, and they have a government in place, Prime Minister B. Ahmed. What, what will that tell you? The international community was silent on that, my brother. Why are they silent on that when the rebel group is legitimately pushing for a regime change? I mean, the Western countries should, for once and all, try to change their stand. And if they are not changing their stand, that is the reason why we are seeing now many African countries are shifting to the East. This is a shift in global order. United States of America, for many years, they have been trying to impose preconditions in the name of, you know, a democracy on countries with weak institutions, weak governance structures. We've seen that happening in many countries. And when United States of America left Libya, they left the country with no solution to whatever they have done when they toppled the government of uh, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. I mean, is that what they are intending for it to happen to Ethiopia? Ethiopia is, is a power to reckon with. This is a country which, as we are now standing, is one of the countries with the strongest foreign policy, I mean, in Horn of Africa. This, this is what they should recognize. I mean, even if they are trying to say this is dictatorship, I mean, we disagree with that. We understand how elections were conducted, and I mean, Prime Minister B. Ahmed uh, got elected unanimously. And uh, finally, I would really like to bring this question even to the audience, my brother. Recently, many African countries are purging for at least African countries to have one permanent member in the United Nations Security Council. Because this is as important and as relevant as it is. We have a lot of stabilities in Africa. From, Mag from the Sahel and the Maghreb in Senegal, the instability by ISIS to Boko Haram in Nigeria, to Al Shabaab in Somalia, to the recent uh, insurgents by ISIS in the Gabo Delgado region in Mozambique. I mean, I we, we we should be in a position now. African countries should be deciding critical security questions for themselves instead of some five permanent member countries standing between the conflict resolution pairs of African countries. Already, this is what we are foreseeing. We have seen AU working in this. We've seen IGAD doing its best to create stability in South Sudan. We have success stories of, you know, East African community. I mean, purging positively for diplomacy to pave way for these countries to be stable. So I, I, I felt if indeed we should be having the new face of United Nations Security Council, then it has come a time for an African state, uh, African countries, uh, to be given uh, a permanent slot at the United Nations Security Council. Thank you. And uh, let me forward this uh, question again, uh, Galma. The Western global powers have, you know, made several unsuccessful attempts to weaken Ethiopian economy or to cripple economy of uh, Ethiopia through, you know, comprehensive United Nations uh, sanctions. And uh, do you think these will, these sanctions, these pressures will just save the TPLF from the final fall? First of all, uh, I recall when the United States of America removed Ethiopia from the Agoa uh, African, you know, uh, free trade agreement, I mean, uh, the Agoa Treaty, uh, that Ethiopia has been suspended. They suspended Ethiopia a year ago. And uh, I mean, so positively, sanctions seems not to be working. Sanctions have never worked even in the international arena. The United States of America for many years have been sanctioning Iran and its policies on the use of the nuclear power. And yet nothing is working. It is in turn creating resentment Every day, the Western powers are receiving, you know, uh, more illegitimate concerns. They are focusing on the things which should not. They, they've tried in Venezuela under the duly elected leadership of President Nicola Maduro, and they failed. And this is what 
the Western powers and the international community should understand that sanction is a threat. Diplomacy is the way. If they really feel that TPLF are justified by what they did in deliberately attacking the Northern Command uh, base in Ethiopia, which was a precursor for the war, then they should be so confident to come out and tell why they did so. I mean, people are so much hyping about the, 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 the I mean, they are so much hyping about what's happening in Mekele, but they are not hyping the good landscape of how Addis Ababa is transforming. I mean, why are we all the time speaking about the negative of the BBC? It's as if they have turned Ethiopia into arenas of genocide. They have portrayed it to the world that Ethiopia is not a country with any future. Let me again remind them that this is a country now which is going, which has reached a level of having self-reliance in electricity and power, I mean, power power and electricity manufacturing. I mean, the other day, the Kenyan government is in the process of uh, uh, importing energy from Ethiopia, and, and this, this is not something which, which we see it being reported, my brother. We, we are not seeing Ethiopia, the landscape of Ethiopia and the suburb are being reported in, in, in international news arena. Why are they so much focused on the propaganda that TPLF are pushing, that there is a genocide? I mean, if they need a good example of a genocide, Ethiopia has been victimized in the international arena and the news, the mainstream uh, channel for too long. The other day I saw something so outrageous and very appealing that there is, I mean, an international media channel portraying uh, the Ethiopian government as the perpetrators of the genocide in Tigray. And when the international community and, you know, Human Rights Watch, they came and they said, let us not say Ethiopian government are the perpetrators. We should also equivocally mention the atrocities that TPLF has committed. My question is, why is it that it is so biased? The Western countries are so biased when it comes to the atrocities, the killings, the rapings, the defiance of duly elected government by attacking Northern Command by TPLF it is not mentioned anywhere. Name it on CNN, name it on, I mean, some Western mainstream media. They are not talking about that. They are not talking about the fact Ethiopia is on the road to be one of the first countries in the world to have a clean energy through hydroelectric power production.